In the city of San Francisco, a portmanteau of San Francisco and Tokyo, Hiro Hamada is a teenage prodigy, but seems to be unable to use his intellect for anything more than trying to enter illegal, back alley bot fights. His older brother Tadashi wishes to change Hiro's mind and tricks his brother into coming to the San Francisco Institute of Technology, where Tadashi is a student. While there, Hiro is introduced to a number of Tadashi's nerd school friends, Gogo, Wasabi, Honey Lemon, and Fred, and the different inventions they have constructed. Tadashi then shows Hiro his own project, an inflatable nurse robot, named Baymax. Thanks to a chip that Tadashi programmed with numerous medical analysis information, Baymax is quite knowledgeable, impressing Hiro. The three also meet Robert Callahan, the head professor of the institute, and after he compliments Hiro on the miniature battle robot he's made, Hiro wants to enter the institute. After Tadashi encourages his brother to use that big brain of yours, Hiro then uses the robotic technology in his battlebot and crafts them into thousands of microbots, controlled by a neural transmitter. Whatever the wearer thinks, the microbots will do, needless to say, Hiro's presentation wins over a number of people at the exhibition. Alistair offers to purchase Hiro's microbot invention on the spot, but Callahan claims that Cray is not a trustworthy man with technology. Hiro then declines Cray's request, but is excited when Callahan presents him with a letter of acceptance to the Institute. Hiro, Tadashi, and their friends head off to celebrate, but the mood is cut short when a fire erupts within the exhibition hall. With word that Callahan is still inside, Tadashi rushes into the building to save him. However, as Hiro watches, an explosion rocks the building, blasting him back. After Tadashi's funeral, Hiro becomes distant from his friends, still working through his grief. His aunt and guardian tries to encourage Hiro to go to the institute and take advantage of his acceptance letter, but he seems unwilling to do so. After accidentally hurting himself in his room, Hiro is surprised when Baymax appears. Baymax attempts to help Hiro, who is reluctant to accept it. However, the mood is broken when Hiro finds one of his microbots wriggling in a pocket of his jacket. Chasing him down, Hiro and Baymax find themselves at an old warehouse. Sneaking inside, Hiro is surprised to find a machine churning out similar microbots, with numerous containers filled with them. However, his surprise turns to shock, when a masked man appears, attempting to kill Hiro and Baymax with the miniature robots. Hiro first goes to the police station to report what he's found, but the officer taking down his story seems reluctant to believe him. It also doesn't help that Baymax's battery starts to run low. Hiro manages to get him home to be recharged. It is then that Baymax inquires where Tadashi is. Hiro attempts to explain to the robot that his brother is gone. He then begins to wonder, given what he saw today, what if it wasn't, an accident, deciding to figure out who has stolen his invention, Hiro decides to upgrade Baymax. After creating a carbon fiber suit for the robot, Hiro also programs a new chip that includes numerous martial arts moves, and the two then return to the warehouse, only to find it empty. However, Hiro notes his microbot has started to move again, and the two follow its movements to the docks off San Francisco, pulls the microbot out of the container. However, moments later, the masked figure appears, using the microbots as a transport means, and carrying a large object with the symbol of a red bird on it. Hiro is just about to send Baymax to get the masked man, when they are accosted by Hiro's friends. The masked man attacks them. The group pile into Wasabi's car, as the masked man gives chase. In the aftermath, the car ends up driving into the bay, but the group is saved by Baymax, who has shed his armor, and helps the group float to the surface after getting on land, Fred leads the group to his home, which happens to be a large mansion Oh shows the group the red bird symbol he saw on the piece of machinery to his friends, but none have seen it. And Fred believes he knows who it is, Alistair Cray. Baymax also surprises Hero, when he explains that during the fight, he scanned the masked man. The group then decides to band together to stop Cray, with Hero helping to design them each special suits based on their specific abilities. Once Hero has done this, he and Baymax fly up above the city, and scan the city from an aerial fan. Baymax's sensors pick up their adversary's health vitals, coming from an island in the bay, the group flies there, to find a deserted base. One room shows the twisted metal remains of some machine, with the red bird symbol on it. Video shows that the room was used for testing a teleportation project, called Operation Silent Sparrow. Suddenly, their masked adversary appears, 
and the group attempts to take him down, but are completely unsure what to do. Hero manages to unmask their foe, but instead of finding Cray, he finds Professor Callahan. This infuriates Hero, who demands that Baymax destroy Callahan, leading to Hero pulling out the chip Tadashi put in him to follow Hero's orders, and he charges at Callahan. However, Hero's friends attempt to stop Baymax, with, before Honey manages to restore Tadashi's chip to his programming, Callahan has escaped during the fight, and Hero demands that Baymax find him. Bent on revenge, Hero blasts away with Baymax back to the garage. Hero finally breaks down over the death of his brother, with Baymax countering that, Tadashi is here. As Hero watches, Baymax projects video of Tadashi's numerous attempts to get him running, with the 84th test being a success, and Tadashi claiming that Baymax is going to help a whole lot of people. Hero's friends eventually return to the garage where he is. The footage shows Professor Callahan also at the test area. During the test, a human test subject was propelled into the portal. However, the portal became unstable, and subject was Callahan's daughter, Abigail. The next day, Cray is revealing the opening of a new facility in the heart of San Francisco when Callahan appears, using the microbots to piece together the last active portal over Cray's building. It is then that Hero and his friends appear, pleading with Callahan to stop what he's doing. The group attempts to stop him, but Callahan uses the microbots to counter their attacks. During the fight, Hero notices that the stray microbots are being sucked up into the portal until Callahan is soon down to a bare minimum. Baymax manages to remove the control mask from him, but they find the test pod, with Abigail inside. Baymax and Hero then attempt to maneuver her out of the dimension. Baymax claims that he can get Hero and Abigail to safety by using his rocket punch. Hero doesn't want to lose Baymax, but the robot assures the boy that he'll always be with him, and Baymax launches off his rocket fist, getting Hero and Callahan's daughter through the portal. Abigail is taken to a hospital, and Callahan is arrested for his crimes. Hero and his friends celebrate by having some downtime at his aunt's place. Shortly afterwards, Hero starts his classes at only to find wedged in its closed fist the green microchip card that Tadashi had put into Baymax. Hero manages to rebuild Baymax and places the chip inside him, embracing his fellow comrade. In the end, we see Hero, Baymax, and their friends running through the streets of San Francisco, ready to help their city in any way they can. And that was the best ending of Big Hero. I hope you enjoyed if you did please do not forget to like and subscribe and sharing the video to your friends. And I will see you next time.